I am Robert Rivera Amizola, and I teach fourth grade in Philadelphia to students who are largely English language learners. I really love what I do. Like most teachers today, however, I feel the constant pressure of preparing our kids for standardized testing. My work with technology helps break the test prep monotony that permeates our school. So, in my never-ending search to find meaningful learning experiences for my students, I discovered an organization called Neat Indeed, a local nonprofit organization that prepares students for civic responsibility and service learning. I thought it made sense to invest my English language learners in a project with which they could relate and which, at the same time, offered cross-curricular opportunities. Little did I know that technology would fit in seamlessly with our project. The framework for service learning that Nat Need Indeed provides for its teachers is called My Voice. My Voice is broken up into five distinct stages. The first stage, the V stage, or Voice Your Concern, is the stage when students build community in the classroom and to value their voice and to learn to trust each other for the valuable work ahead. The O stage, outline your objective, is when students begin to think more seriously about the topic they want to explore and to narrow its focus. In the I stage, investigate your objectives. The serious work of delving deeper into the topic begins. When most of the background learning has taken place, the C stage, conducting service, begins. Finally, in the E stage, evaluate and celebrate. Students reflect upon the work they have done and celebrate their accomplishments. In my classroom, we begin the process, as I have done every year since I started teaching, with our morning meeting routine. This intimate community building experience helps build the foundation for establishing the trust and honesty that is crucial for a service learning project. Along with the other activities in the Need and Deed framework that expose the students to social issues, we experimented with a class blog and learned how to create one together. It turned out to be a great way for the kids to record their thinking. We used edublog.com, which is free for educators. We also used gaggle.net, which provided for my students a free email account that allowed them to access the blog. With vivid pictures representing various social issues, the students could focus on one that touched their heart and make a comment or answer a question, such as, why did you pick this image? How does it make you feel? What can you do about it? If you could change one thing in the world, what would it be and why? In their own written posts, here are some of their unedited blog responses. If I could change one thing in the world, I would make gas prices go down, not up. And I would give people free health insurance. If I can change the world, I will make all the people stop littering. I also make people stop smoking. If I could change one thing in the world, I would make college free. I would do that to push kids to be their best they can be. If I could change one thing in the world, I would take all away all junk food and people would only have fruits and vegetables to eat and be in shape because all the people are getting fat from eating candy. Candy comes from a factory which causes the meat. I wish people can be healthier and not mean. After more discussions and activities, the class used Doodle.com, an online poll, to vote on the issue that was most important to them. 
pollution seemed to be the issue with which most of the students were interested. And so, now it was time for the O stage of our service learning project. It was time for us to narrow down our topic. We read articles, had class discussions, but because so many of my students are English language learners, it was important for me to make the information accessible to them. Once again, technology came to the rescue. The school district of Philadelphia has purchased an account with Discovery Education. This resource became a major means for researching pollution. Through the use of brief videos and images, students with limited access to the language could still participate in the research process, while those kids with little more reading proficiency were able to complete a series of web quests on land, water, and air pollution. After a brief PowerPoint tutorial, groups of students were then assigned to make a class presentation using PowerPoint to make their case to the class. Then it was back to doodle.com for a vote. The winner, water pollution. Need Indeed then enlisted the help of the Fairmont Waterworks Interpretive Center. The site of a 19th century municipal water supply, the Fairmont Waterworks is now a center for the understanding of Philadelphia's urban watershed and its history. We were lucky to have Ellen Schultz, one of the site's most dynamic teachers, to be our guide through the process. She came to our classroom on several occasions and secured a trip for our class to the center. The I stage of our project would not have been complete without this fantastic experience. Pulling all this learning together, the students taught many lessons in other classrooms. They created brochures for distribution and booklets outlining facts they uncovered about water pollution and conservation. Hi, my name is Elaine and I'm going to talk about sa ways of saving water. The students to wanted to share water. everything they learned with a wider audience, so I suggested that they create podcasts to upload onto the school district website. Podcasting had proven useful for the students in other curricular areas in the past. It's a great way to show what they know, and to have a lot of fun doing it. The kids wrote scripts, they revised them, interviewed, and rewrote their work before submitting their first podcasts to the okay. school district podcast Jasper, what would website. You to save the, water? the podcasts, in fact, were so successful Ray, that the Fairmont the water? Waterworks uploaded them okay. for a time onto their website. Here is just a sample of the amazing work okay. that the kids okay. put together. Here are Ray, Lewis, and Edeli. Hi, Hi guys. Hi, Hi Lane. Do you guys know what a gallon of milk looks like, right? Right. right. Well, most American that you and I use it in every of 1,500 gallons of water every day. Wow. wow. That's right, it is. A person can use as much as 50 gallons of water taking a bath and if you leave the water running while you are brushing your teeth, you can waste about 10 gallons of water down the drain. Where when all was done, the kids exhibited the year-long work at the shout-out celebration at Philadelphia's Temple University. The pride was so obvious to me when they explained to their parents, the board of directors of Need Indeed, and other adults all that they had learned. My students were not the only ones to learn a great deal that school year. I did too. Instead of making technology fit into our service learning project, my job was determining what our objectives were with the class and if a particular piece of technology fit into those, 
objectives, then we used it. Technology made wiser, more efficient use of our time. More importantly, my students learned a great deal that year. They had fun doing it, and we even managed to pull through standardized testing in the process. I look forward to future projects with future students where technology might make our task a little easier. Sound off on stories now grow cold These lies that permeate these days We live in pain and pain and pressure